Well, here we go, the granddaddy of them all. Can you believe we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day inside an Irish pub? I'm excited. I know I am. I am Matt Holmes. <laughs> Welcome to Catholic Cocktails this week. <laughs> And this is a weekly video production of Salt and Light Catholic Radio in Boise, Idaho. But uh, we like to drive out to Meridian inside this quaint little Irish pub that we have grown to love. Uh, it's called The Harp, and we have just had a great time. We've been almost a year coming out yeah, here coming and up. filming Catholic cocktails. And so today we are really going to dig in and celebrate yes. the man, the myth, the legend, St. Patrick of Ireland. So we thought we would do the whole thing in a leprechaun oh. voice but that might get a little old <laughs> yeah i mean so. and sometimes when you mess up and it turns into indian <laughs> and and that's not like, good that's not good that's so not good. <laughs> we, we could try it but <laughs> we'll stick <laughs> um so as you know if you don't already know shame on you but that's okay we introduce a drink and this saint to you in this first little part uh, we tell you kind of what dishes and instruments you're going to need to make the drink. Then we send it over to our saint expert, Teresa Zapetta, who will lay out um, all the information on the saint. Um, and then I try to find some, some pictures for y'all so you can kind of see what's going on there. Uh, then she'll send it back to us. The bartender makes the drink step by step so you can join along. And then Brian and I get to try it and talk about what we learned from Teresa. That's right. Uh, so this is uh, one of those opportunities we get to hoist a glass, raise a toast to our favorite uh, Catholic saints based on this book here, Drinking with the Saints, by Michael P. Foley. I yep. failed to mention that. Oh. Naughty. Get on it. No get bangers on. and mash for me. So the Dog drink... on it. What's the drink today? Today we're going to do a Irish coffee. Ah, I mean, there's a plethora classic. of different things you can do here. There's classic. Irish whiskey, there's Irish beer, but we thought, you know, it's early enough in the morning. Maybe we should have a Irish coffee. Yes. And we definitely. know that the uh, owner of the harp makes a really good Irish yes. coffee because she makes it every day. Yes, she does. She great. swears by it. So <laughs> it's like, you know, I want an Irish coffee being made by an expert. So exactly. So I we thought we'd have her come on the show. We're going to sweet talk her into the very first time on camera. <laughs> Presenting <Angie's>. to you. <laughs> and she's going to make us her Angie. famous. Irish coffee. It's so good. that's what we're going to drink. Um, then we're going to watch her do that. It's pretty easy, I it's think. It's super easy. It's like it doesn't mean that's... Irish whiskey and a little bit of coffee and some whipped cream on the top. Maybe yeah. I got my ratios wrong. We'll find out. <laughs> Irish whiskey. <laughs> glug, glug, glug. Coffee. <laughs> whipped cream. Oh, there is so much about St. Patrick. Um, things that we think we know and Things, things that we don't know. Things that we don't know. There's more to his story than most people think. Yes. They're like, oh, he's from Ireland. It's actually no. Wrong. Wrong. Survey says. So it's time to test your knowledge of St. Patrick. Here is Teresa Zapetta. Patrick was born in 387 in Kilpatrick, Scotland. His parents were Roman noble Roman citizens, and his dad, Calphurnius, was a high ranking. Roman military officer. He was a decurio. So St. Patrick, Ireland's favorite son, was not Irish at all. However, when he was 16, and some sources say 14, he was captured by Irish marauders, and he was sold as a slave to a slave master in Ireland. This is where his remote formation began. God started forming here him now for the work that God intended him to do in the future. His master was from the Doritical priesthood. So Patrick became familiar with the practices of Druidism. He also gained a fluent um, ability to speak the Celtic language. And Part of the work that he was doing was he was out to tend sheep. So he was alone for days, weeks, months on end. And he experienced cold, hunger, thirst. All of those helped him become disciplined to face physical adversity. He also, in his loneliness, turned to God. And he formed a profound practice of prayer and an intimate relationship with God. The love of God and his fear grew in me more and more. 
as did the faith. And my soul was roused so that in a single day, I have said as many as a hundred prayers and in night, nearly the same. I prayed whilst in the wood and on the mountain. And even before dawn, I was roused to pray and felt no hurt if whether there was snow or ice and rain. Patrick was enslaved for six years when in a dream, he was told to escape by way of the coast. And Patrick wrote that he walked 200 miles to get to the coast. There was a ship there, a German ship, that had st a stolen pack of dogs that they were taking to sell in Britain. And the story is that the um, captain did not want Patrick as a sort of stowaway or a passenger in any way. And uh, that apparently when Patrick left the ship, the dogs started barking and howling and whining and created such a cacophony. A captain had him come back and the dogs quieted. That's the story of how he was able to get passage to Britain. Once in Britain, God began his more immediate preparation for the work at hand. Patrick was, he studied priesthood for the priesthood under Saint Germain, and he was eventually ordained to the priesthood by Saint Germain. And he accompanied Saint Germain in his work to the Britons to combat Pelagianism. And they were very successful and their work was accompanied by extraordinary events, miraculous events. Pope Saint Celestine I commissioned Patrick to gather the Irish race into the one fold of the Catholic Church. It was Celestine that gave Patrick his name Patrick. It was Pater Suius or Pateritus, but it means the father of his people. Patrick was then ordained to the episcopacy by Saint Maximus and went as a bishop and arrived in Slain, Ireland in 433. I find it fascinating that the first thing Patrick did was he went to his old slave master and paid his ransom and then imparted the church's blessing upon this man who treated him so poorly. Patrick's story is amazing. And I apologize because I'm gonna skip over a lot of stuff. I encourage you to read more about the life of St. Patrick. But again, Patrick's time in Ireland served him well for he knew the ways of the Irish people, knew the ways of the Druids, he knew how their culture was. So he knew that in order to be effective, he had to get the blessing, so to speak, of the supreme monarch of Ireland, Leary. Patrick met with Leary twice on Easter Sunday, pleading for the cause of the faith. It was in that second meeting, reportedly, that he plucked the shamrock out. Again, Patrick understood Druidism. He knew that that plant was considered miraculous. And he was able to say, you don't understand how come this plant is miraculous. So why do you find that understanding the Trinity, although it's a mystery, should hold you back? Leary gave Patrick the permission to evangelize all of Ireland. And you know, the rest is history. So Patrick is really fitting, a fitting person to toast and raise a glass to. And what better way to do that with an Irish whiskey in the form of an Irish coffee. And I can personally attest to that drink because it's traditional for me to end my St. Patrick's festivity on the evening of St. Patrick's Day with an Irish coffee. So I recommend to you St. Patrick and I recommend the Irish coffee as well. Hey, happy St. Patrick's Day. There is no place you would rather be on this day than inside an Irish pub. And we are at our favorite. It's the Harp Irish Pub and Eatery in Meridian. And behind the bar today, we are blessed to have the co-owner. Angie is gonna make us her famous 
Irish coffee. And we've seen you make it a hundred times, so we knew that when today came around, we wanted you to make your version of it. So what all do you put into your version of the Irish coffee? Well, the number one important thing is the JMO. Oh, okay. Jameson. JMO. Yeah, that's what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, of sugar cube, coffee, yeah. okay. and whipped cream. And to top it all off, we shave chocolate shavings. Wow, that sounds fancy. Yeah. Okay, so what is the story behind Jameson? Why is it your favorite as far as Irish whiskey goes? It's just the best tasting Irish whiskey. I used to drink Bushmills and then I tried Jameson and it's just so much better. A lot yeah. of history behind Jameson, yes. behind the name too, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, this is triple distilled Irish whiskey. They've been doing this since 1780, so apparently they figured it out. Yes. Yeah. So they have several others, but this is my best favorite. There's a black label that's wonderful. Okay. Very smooth. Um, several others <laughs> behind the bar. There's a coffee one. IPA, but this is my favorite. That's your favorite. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to step away. We're going to watch Angie in action here make her famous Irish coffee on St. Patrick's Day. Okay. So the very first thing we start with is the Jameson in the Irish coffee glass. Then the hot coffee. And one sugar cube. We want that to dissolve in the hot coffee. And a whipped cream. I'm gonna bring that down just for a sec. some shaved chocolate on top. It's like a dessert. Okay. And a couple of straws. And there's a perfect Irish coffee. Well, it's interesting in just the time that we've been sort of rearranging the set here, how the cream is starting to melt and sink to the bottom. It's pretty. It's good. There's a lot of Irish whiskey in this. <laughs> just send it. When you make an Irish coffee, send it. Yes. Don't expect to go anywhere. Yeah. She's in the kitchen now, so we can kind of say this, but <laughs> dang. Hey, hey, hey. All the right. Irish know how to make it well, okay? Well, you're getting an Irish coffee from an Irish lady, exactly. so you know so it's authentic. You better know it's going to be delicious. It's starting to look like Guinness now. I know, it does look like Guinness. All right, I'm excited. Here we go. <laughs> and you're not a coffee drinker. We should probably preface that by saying... Well, I like coffee. It doesn't like you. It doesn't usually like okay. me. Okay. But that is very good. Is it yummy? It is yummy. Okay. Yes. Mm. It's like a kid when it's like Christmas and your dad orders you a hot chocolate. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it looked like it would be strong, but it really wasn't that no, strong. No, it's nice. It's smooth. It's perfect. It's coffee ee -E -E. <laughs> What little... are you, a penguin? <laughs> yeah. You still got some of that whipped cream on there, man. Mm. There you go. Now you... Oh, no. It's so good. It's... Oh, you thank you. You know what? We, got, just... oh, we okay. got people. We got people. We got people in the bar. We got extras. It's St. Patrick's Day, and where else would you want to be than a bar? In a Irish but this pub. specific bar. <laughs> Not just any bar. This one. Don't go to those trashy biker bars, y'all. No. I know I would never do that. No. <clears throat> Much. Never. 
So we hope that you learned a lot from Teresa uh, about St. Patrick, um, cleared up a lot of myths, some misunderstandings yeah. and things that uh, he's not we from think, Ireland. You know, right. Yeah. And he was a slave. Yeah. And he had to forgive the people that sold him into yeah, slavery. Yeah, that's what I kind of saw there was a huge theme of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I thought that was super interesting how he was, so he went through all that suffering. He was a slave for like six years, which is, which is a long time. It feels, you know, maybe in the broad scheme of things it's yeah. not, but anyway, he had to suffer for right. six years. And then he gets free, he gets to go home, but then God calls him back. back. And so he had to embrace that and forgive and then live out more suffering and persecution while he was there, even as a priest and a, and a bishop. Yeah. They persecuted him, he got enslaved, he got beat up, you know, so he just, he kept saying yes. Mm -hmm. so. so again, as we are in Lent now, that you would um, maybe take some time and think about those people in your life that you need to forgive. Mm. And we've mm -hmm. talked a lot about that at the uh, Catholic radio station here in the past weeks, so just about, um, you know, with the whole thing of forgiveness and holding grudges and anger, mm -hmm. you know, with even if it's righteous anger, um, that yeah. you, you know, hating somebody is drinking poison and hoping the other person's going to die. Yeah. And if you let that go and you forgive, it doesn't mean that what they did, you're not justifying it, you're not right. forgetting it's, about it's it. It's not that it wasn't, that they, what they did wasn't wrong. Right. That's never the issue. It's that you're sitting there and stewing in something that is taking your peace yes. and sucking your light when they should be the one who has to deal with that, yeah. not you, mm -hmm. you know? And if they don't acknowledge it, that's on them. They have to answer for that. Right. But why would you want to carry around that in your life? And like you said, let that rob your joy. You can always, I mean, talk to them about it, right? You can always be like, hey, that wasn't cool, blah, 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 and have like an adult conversation about it. But if they're not going to say sorry, they're not going to say sorry. Yeah. Like you can't sit there and like throw a fit about it for eight years or right. whatever. Because, oh, my my stepbrother didn't say sorry when he pushed me off the, you know. <laughs> like, I, I, you know what 25 I mean? years ago. Exactly. I still don't talk to that jerk. <laughs> anyway. So you just uh, kind of glean something from St. Patrick as far as the forgiveness aspect of it goes. You know, God does call us to forgive and you're gonna feel better um, whatever happens with the other person that's between that other person and God, but at least right. you will be able to sleep at night knowing that you've made peace with the situation. Yeah. You have forgiven and let that go. And I mean, we're all followed, not... we're all followed to, uh, all called, excuse me, to follow Christ. Right? Told you there was a lot of Irish whiskey <laughs> in that coffee. I thought I was totally correct there for a solid minute. Wow. Anyway, um, we're all... Take two. <laughs> ...called to follow Christ, and on the cross, he forgave his enemies immediately. Yes. While he was dying. Excellent. So I think we can forgive Jimmy Bob Joe, who didn't give us a discount at Walmart or whatever. Oh, that Jimmy Bob Joe, I tell you. <laughs> He's such a character. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She got that one good. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you going to celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Well, um, I am part of an Irish dance company. Yes, you are. So we spend all day running all over Meridian and Boise and performance, pack your stuff up, move, performance, pack your stuff up, move. So we're all over. In fact, over. as soon as she leaves here this morning, that's where she's going. She's yep. going to go put on her clogs and she's got to dance down the road clogs. somewhere. We don't clog. <laughs> Irish dance is different. The shoes okay. are different. I'll throw up a slide here so you can see they're not clogs. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But um, yeah, so I usually do that. Um, and then I, I try to go out with some friends afterwards. Oh. It's not too late, you know which it usually is pretty late, Yeah, but we'll see. I also have work and class and wow. adult things. Adult things. So. so. How about you, what do you do? Well, I'm gonna wake up and have a big bowl of Lucky Charms. Heck uh, I'm gonna have Heck some, some potatoes. <laughs> Lucky Charms and mashed potatoes. Well, not at the same time, <laughs> different meals, no, no, different no. times of day. Uh, gonna have a couple of these, I think sometime. I'll have Angie Morning. make me one more before, <laughs> Night. before we go. No. Um, yeah, I grew up thinking that I was half Irish. And oh. then as I got older, <laughs> realized that wasn't the case. You're like a quarter Irish? I'm 0% oh, Irish. Oh, you're 0% Irish. Yeah. I think I'm we're actually, all Irish on St. Patrick's I'm Day. I'm actually though. Welsh. But, <laughs> but yes, on St. Patrick's anyway. Day, don your green, 
you know, talk like Lucky the Leprechaun, and <laughs> everybody gets to enjoy being Irish on this day. It's true. And wherever you go today, make sure that you remember the uh, the famous cheers, the toast. Oh, remember? Yes. Yes. So, to toast the Apostle of Ireland, a simple Irish Gaelic slancha, meaning to your health, will suffice. Nice. So there you go. Slancha, which so. is actually written all over in here. <laughs> it actually is. <laughs> so we really hope ahead. that you live in the area and you need to come down and, and check out for sure. the, the Harp for Irish sure. Pub and Eatery, uh, anyway. which we want to thank once again for hosting us on this very special day. I for mean, there's like year. Christmas and St. Patrick's Day is a close second as far as Jesus, the, <laughs> Saint <Irish> Patrick, yeah. <laughs> pretty. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this place is going to get rocking here after we get uh, off the air here. Yeah. So it's going to be a huge party tonight and tomorrow. So ah, you should come check it out. Two day event. Yes, it is. Have bands and dancers. One day and... just can't contain St. Patrick. No. So we hope that you have a uh, a great celebration and uh, that you'll take some time to learn more about the Apostle of Ireland. Yep. Even though he was Scottish. Scottish or British. You got to go back now and you have to watch the episode again so, and guess, see yeah. what Teresa Sorry, said. Sorry, Teresa, my bad. I should have paid closer attention. But uh, if you two. enjoyed this episode, give us a little thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on so that you don't miss it. Uh, again, Catholic Cocktails is a weekly video production of Salt and Light Catholic Radio. Yep. And we have a playlist on our Salt and Light Radio page. Yep. And you can go back and see all the all saints that we've highlighted. We've almost been doing this for a year, yep. hard to believe. Yep. That they've put up with this that long, but they have. <laughs> Invading because their... Because they're saints as well. Amen. Amen. So Alrighty, until guys. then, uh, St. Patrick of Ireland, pray, pray for, for us. us. Sláinte. Cheers, everybody.